of the YF-23 is more than just power and performance. It was an extraordinary fighter jet that had unmatched precision and lethality and was a result of combined years of innovation in the aviation industry. With supersonic speeds and stealth technology that made it invisible under enemy radar, it redefined what's possible, and Japan is ready to splurge money on this aircraft to make it undefeatable. However, the question on everybody's mind is about the technology behind the aircraft. What advantage will it bring to Japan? And how does it affect the current dynamics of the power toss between world powers? Join us as we unveil the mystery behind the YF-23. Japan is prepared to invest financial resources in the project and has shown strong interest in joining forces with other nations to produce a formidable fighter jet. There has been a lot of noise about Japan working with Lockheed, and this is because Lockheed's idea was to put together the F-22 Raptor with the newer F-35, as well as the Northrop YF-23 Black Widow II. Back then, the Soviet Union had these new jets, the Su-27 Flanker and MiG-29 Fulcrum that were generating problems for the United States, and the only stealth fighter the United States had was the F-117 Nighthawk, which was great at hiding on radar, but it could not fight other jets head-on, and it was not super fast, or quote test. The program aimed to fix that. They wanted a fighter that was invisible to radar, that could outmaneuver the Soviet jets in a dogfight, and could fly at supersonic speeds without guzzling fuel like crazy. This last part was a big challenge because jet engines have fan blades that make them easy to spot on the radar. So the advanced tactical fighter had to be stealthy and powerful all at the same time. Fast forward to 1981. The competition is heating up and the Air Force has picked their final two contenders, Lockheed Martin and Northrop. These companies now have four years to build prototypes basically flying test versions of their proposed fighter jets. Lockheed's aircraft prototype was the YF-22 and Northrop's was the YF-23. It's important to note that both companies have prior experience constructing untraceable aircraft and Lockheed had previously created the F-117 Nighthawk, the first stealth aircraft to enter service. Northrop was no stranger to the game, having created the massive radar evading B-2 Spirit and collaborated with another aerospace giant, McDonnell Douglas, on the YF-23 project. While Lockheed's YF-22 was beautifully designed, Northrop's YF-23 was an entirely different issue. Its design seemed to be taken from a science fiction movie. Its distinctive diamond-shaped wings and incredibly thin side profile, which resembled the SR-71 Blackbird espionage jet, allowed it to hide and remain invisible under the radar. But the real eye catchers were these two massive tail fins sticking way out at an angle. They could even move in all directions thanks to a fancy fly-by-wire system, helping the plane turn and climb with ease. The engines are where things become technical. This is because the Grey Ghost used a unique General Electric engine that could essentially change its mode on speed, whereas the Spider used the same type of engine as the YF-22, which was nice. After all, it functioned better as a result, both at low and high speeds. Both aircraft could be refueled mid-air and had a weapons bay that could hold four long-range missiles. In a full production version, they would have also sported a 20mm cannon and a spot for a couple more heat-seeking missiles. It's important to note that neither prototype had all the bells and whistles yet, like fancy radars. The YF-22's engines, on the other hand, give it the ability to move somewhat, which enables it to make incredibly acute curves at low speeds, which is the only difference between the two. The Black Widow II did not use this method. Some people felt that the YF-22 was the obvious model to select because of this, but it was not that easy. Even without such advanced engines, the YF-23 was nevertheless able to perform some incredible feats, such as tilting at strange angles while in the air. The story twist is that in testing, the YF-23 performed better than the others in many areas. Even though it lacked expensive engines, it could fly supersonically for extended durations without using a lot of fuel, and its overall range was rather large. Some folks say Lockheed Martin just did a way better job of showing off their YF-22's turning ability. They impressed the evaluation team, which was mostly made up of fighter pilots who were used to old-school tactics. Another reason might be money. 
The YF-23 was rumored to be more expensive to build and maintain, and the YF-22 is already a super pricey plane at over $100 million a pop. On top of that, the YF-22 seemed more put together overall, and some people at the Pentagon were not sure Northrop could handle the project well after all the delays and cost overruns with their B-2 bomber. There's even a rumor that Lockheed got the contract just to keep them in business. Here's the funny part. If the Air Force could choose between a super maneuverable fighter or one with longer range and better stealth today, they'd almost definitely pick the stealthy one. Why? Because war planners think future air battles will happen mostly beyond seeing distance. Being invisible to radar is way more important than tight turns. Plus, relying on short-range fighters means they have to take off from bases close to the enemy, which are prime targets for missile attacks. These days, the Air Force needs jets that can handle the vast distances of the Pacific Ocean. So the YF-23 lost the competition, but that wasn't the end of its story. Fast forward to today, and the Air Force is actually looking to build a new super-stealthy fighter jet focused on long-range strikes. And guess what? Lockheed's design for this new jet looks a lot like the YF-23. Seems like the tables might be turning. Speaking of the YF-23, all that amazing tech didn't just disappear. More than a decade after the competition, Northrop tried to bring it back as a mid-range bomber, but the Air Force went with a different design in the end. Still, you can see the two YF-23 prototypes chilling in museums now, one in Ohio and the other in California. Now here's where things get interesting. Japan has a long history of wanting super stealthy fighter jets. For years, they lobbied the United States to buy the F-22 Raptor, another top secret American fighter, because with tensions rising with North Korea and China, the Japanese Air Force wanted the best possible tech to defend their airspace. In the end, the United States opted against exporting the F-22 for two reasons. They were concerned about keeping all of the classified stealth technology under wraps. Sharing it with another country, especially a close ally, represented a significant risk. Second, China was not the tremendous menace that it is now. Plus, the United States was preoccupied with the war on terror. So selling very sophisticated jets was not a key. When Japan had to solicit for partners to help develop their next fighter jet, Northrop was more than ready to assist with this mission of building the next big thing for Japan. However, they did not abandon the YF-23 prototype. They decided to share the idea and technology with Japan. When all the capabilities of this fighter jet were reviewed, it was unanimously agreed that the current model required a couple of modifications. This included the stealth coating of the aircraft. The previous coating was so expensive they could barely afford it. So the plan was to get a newer generation coating that was eco-friendly and also affordable. The avionics were also not left out in the remodeling plans. Japan would rather begin with a stable design and improve on it than develop a new jet from scratch. Back in the year 2004, Northrop Grumman pitched a plane called the FB-23, basically a YF-23 with a bomb-dropping mission. They called it the Rapid Theater Attack Aircraft. This was all because the Air Force needed a new bomber to handle regional conflicts, kind of like a middle ground between the big long-range bombers and smaller attack jets. They came out with the FB-23, which competed with the FB-22 and the B-1R. They even went so far as to showcase it by altering an already existing YF-23 prototype. But in the end, the FB-23 project was shelved because the Air Force determined they needed a bomber with a considerably longer range. They have since been developing entirely new bomber designs. Let us explore the features of the old YF-23 fighter jet that make Japan interested in rebuilding the prototype. One intriguing element of the aircraft is the tail section. Instead of a standard horizontal stabilizer, it included two massive fins that could move in any direction. This clever mechanism, known as a V-tail, allowed the YF-23 to turn and ascend easily. The pilot seat is positioned in the nose of the jet for an excellent view, and the plane has regular landing gear, including a nose wheel and two main wheels in the back. The weapons were tucked away neatly under the fuselage, between the nose and the main landing gear. Inside the cockpit, the pilot gripped a center stick to control the plane and used a throttle on the side to control the engine power. 
Another important distinction between the YF-23 and the competitor, the YF-22, was how they turned. The YF-22 had clever engines that could shift slightly, allowing it to perform fast maneuvers. The Black Widow II lacked this technique, although it was still able to fly extremely quickly without utilizing afterburners, which guzzle gasoline like mad. Speaking of heat, the YF-23 had one more sneaky tactic up its sleeve. Heat-absorbing tiles were used to line specific passages through which the engine exhaust flowed, lowering the plane's heat signature and making it more difficult for heat-seeking missiles to lock on. Let us check out the amazing flight controls on the YF-23. It is not just your standard stick and rudder setup. Instead, a central computer system was the brains of the operation. Here's how it worked. Imagine raising the flap and aileron on one wing while lowering them on the other. That would make the plane roll. Now the YF-23 had these unique V-shaped tail fins angled way out at 50 degrees. To control pitch, these fins would twist in opposite directions like a giant V opening and closing. Yaw, which is turning left and right, uses these fins moving together. Test pilots loved how the YF-23 handled at high angles of attack, way more than older jets. That means it could point its nose way up in the air and stay stable. For braking, they just flip all the flaps and ailerons down together, acting like giant air brakes. To save some cash on this fancy plane, they borrowed some parts from other jets. The nose wheel came from an F-15, the landing gear parts from an F-A-18, and even the front cockpit bits from the F-15E. Pretty cool way to keep things affordable while building something new, looking more closely at the YF-23A specifications. Despite never quite making it into production, this fighter plane prototype had some amazing features. First up, it was a single seater, meaning only one pilot could fly it at a time. In terms of size, we're talking about a machine that's roughly 67 feet long with a wingspan of 43 feet and a height of almost 14 feet. But loaded up for a mission, its gross weight could reach 51,220 pounds. And if you factor in a full weapons load, it could take off at a maximum weight of 62,000 pounds. Under the hood, the YF-23A packed a punch. It was equipped with either the General Electric YF-120 or the Pratt & Whitney yf 19 two strong afterburning turbofan engines. Each engine could thrust 35,000 pounds when the afterburners were turned on. This fighter jet requires a lot of exertion to get through the air. Let's jump into the performance of this beast. Now keep in mind, this is all based on testing since the YF-23A never actually went into production. Speed was a strong point. At high altitudes, this thing could hit speeds of Mach 2.2, which translates to roughly 1,450 miles per hour. It could maintain a super cruise speed of Mach 1.7, which is still incredibly fast at over 1,000 miles per hour, even when flying for extended periods at high altitudes. The range is another important component of this aircraft. The YF-23A was built to go a very long way. Unloaded, it could fly up to 2,424 nautical miles, which is roughly 2,789 miles, or 2,789 miles, or 4,489 kilometers. That's practically the whole circumference of the US. The range would decrease when you took into account the weaponry and gasoline needed for combat operations. Still quite impressive, estimates place its operational capability within a battle radius of 650 to 700 nautical miles. And speaking of combat, it's important to note that the YF-23A never actually carried any weapons during testing. But the prototypes were designed to hold a pretty standard arsenal for a fighter jet. We're talking about a 20 millimeter Vulcan cannon for close-in dogfights, along with several air-to-air -air missiles for longer range engagements. It could carry a mix of AIM-120 MROMs or AIM-7 Sparrows for taking down enemy aircraft from medium range, and AIM-9 Sidewinders for those intense short-range battles. So Japan originally planned to construct its stealth aircraft, but they eventually joined the F-35 program, which makes a lot of sense. Japan presently operates two variants of the F-35, which are the F-35A and the F-35B. They have plans to purchase a lot more of these aircraft, including the F-35B, which can take off and land vertically. 
The Lockheed Martin Lightning II, model number 35, is an aircraft built in the United States that combines stealth and multi-role capabilities to create a true powerhouse. What purposes does this jet serve? The F-35 is made to destroy adversary aircraft in air-to-air -air combat. However, it's also great at initiating ground attacks. Furthermore, it can intercept enemy electronics and obtain intelligence. The cool thing is that this aircraft comes in three different configurations. The typical jet used for takeoff and landing is the F-35A. Then there's the F-35B, which has a very short runway for takeoff and can even land vertically. Think about that. This one works great on some ships or even smaller bases. The F-35C is the last one, designed to be launched from aircraft carriers. To understand this aircraft, we have to do a little digging. And by doing that, we take a look at the X-35. This aircraft has been described as a close relative of the F-35 and was a prototype from Lockheed Martin that competed with the Boeing X-32 designs. Creating this prototype required a lot of effort from the team. And even though there were some setbacks because some investors claimed it was too big and the design was too complicated, others felt it was too expensive. This is what distinguishes this jet. It is versatile as it can engage in air-to-air -air combat with top-notch accuracy when attacking ground targets. Secondly, the F-35 is equipped with cutting-edge avionics and sensors. These provide the pilot with superior vision and hearing, enabling them to see and comprehend their surroundings more clearly than before. This jet is not only strong, it is also designed to be stealthy. Its peculiar wing and tail forms, along with those two slanted fins, allow it to avoid being detected by radar. To further facilitate accurate maneuvering while in flight, the F-35 is equipped with unique control surfaces on its wings and tail. Imagine being able to switch on a dime swiftly and effortlessly. One important observation is the size of the wings. Compared to the traditional F-35A and B, the wingspan is smaller. This is because on certain ships they have to fit into specific areas. Another great feature of the F-35 engines. Their unusual design facilitates effective and continuous air intake and flow. This is critical for an aircraft attempting to fly supersonic or, or faster than the speed of sound. The F-35 is a very robust airplane. It is made of a variety of materials, some of which are highly durable composites. This increases its durability, but also adds weight when compared to older fighter jets. However, there is a valid rationale for the extra weight. The F-35 ability to conceal weapons within allows it to move discreetly. It also offers a slew of cutting edge advancements that will provide. Do you recall the fighter plane we previously mentioned, the YF-23? Who lost to the F-35? It turns out that a version known as the NATF-23 was offered for the Navy. This one is specifically made for landing and taking off from aircraft carriers. Here's what made the NATF-23 different. First, it focused more on carrying long-range weapons and sensors, perfect for defending a whole fleet of ships. The wings were also moved further back and redesigned to be more efficient on long flights. The NATF-23, in contrast to the YF-23, had regular vertical tails rather than those distinctively slanted ones. This made it easier for it to maneuver at slower speeds, which is essential for landing on a carrier deck that rocks. Concerning carriers, the NATF-23 featured a unique hook designed to grasp arresting wires during landings, as well as the ability to fold its wings to accommodate congested decks. The engines were also adjusted to provide pilots with more control during landings and takeoffs. Compared to the original YF-23, the NATF-23 was a completely different animal because it was created especially for the challenging conditions of carrier operations. While the NATF-23 never got built, it's a fascinating look at what could have been. It shows how engineers can take a cool design and adapt it for a whole new purpose. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.